I'm Grant Dietrich and this is my report on the thermocoupler transient heat process for Group 1. For the entire process, I decided to split it into two sections, insertion of the thermocoupler into the water bath and the removal. I decided to also edit out data from the beginning. You can see right here it's mostly stagnant. I also kind of cut out a lot of data from the end as well after it equilibrated at the thermocoupler equilibrated with the water itself and a little bit from the middle. Here's the raw temperature for both the insertion processes of hot and cold. You'll notice that it equilibrates rather fast at around, around 10 seconds for the cold. Anytime there has been heat added to the system, it takes a little bit, uh, it's a little bit faster than the colder water, at least relative to it is. You'll also notice that for the insertion process, it's going to happen a little bit faster than the removal process. This is mostly because water has a higher uh, thermal conductivity than air. So it's going to happen, it's going to equilibrate a little bit faster in water than it will in air. Here's the normal temperature. Now the normal temperature is going to be a ratio of the difference between the reservoir and which it's dipped into. So for the insertion, it's going to be the water itself. And it's going to be the difference between that and the instantaneous temperature at each particular time. And it's also going to be divided by the difference between the original uh, thermocoupler temperature and the uh, reservoir temperature, which is going to remain constant. You'll notice that both of them begin to slope down. This is because for the cold temperature, the, the reservoir temperature is going to be around 1 degree Celsius. As it decreases and equilibrates with the water, the thermocoupler uh, temperature also drops. So the numerator is going to drop as well, which results in the slope down. The same thing happens for normal temperature, except as it rises, it detracts from the 100 degrees Celsius of the boiling water. I'd like to also draw your attention to these R squared values. This is the least squared fit of the uh, data to the best fit line, which is going to be the distance between each data point and that line right there. It's squared and it also kind of implies a deviance between each one. So on, on insertion, it's going to be a little bit higher than a removal. This is because it happens faster and harkening back to what I said about thermal conductivity. Here is the logarithmic um, function of the normal temperature, which is where things get interesting. At least relatively speaking, um, you kind of have this decrease right here, and this is where you can determine the time constant. The time constant is going to be how fast the thermal coupler detects a change of ambient temperature or heat. So it's just how fast it picks up that change in temperature. If the temperature changes faster, the time step is going to be shorter. You'll notice this slope right here kind of implies what the time step is going to be. Now normally it should be time on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. I did for consistency say temperature on the x-axis, time on the y, time on the x-axis temperature on the y-axis to keep things consistent. So the time constant is going to be 1 over the slope. And the time constant is of course going to be shorter as I said for the insertion more than the removal. Since both of them are similar, um, that's the lowest number that Excel could find. Uh, it said that both of them were around 1.25. If you go back, you will notice for the insertion that there's kind of a little ripple right here for the insertion into the ice bath. This could be caused by certain errors, certain human errors. If the person dips a thermocoupler into the water and it comes into contact with the ice, it's now a conduction reaction rather than a convection reaction, which is what has been observed in the experiment. There's also deviations, as I said. It's higher whenever there's any kind of heat um, being involved, and it's higher in the insertion because of how quickly the change occurs. There's also human error, which I just described, and there's also the equipment. If the equipment is used, it could also affect the data collected. So the result is the bigger time constant um, from the removal because of how slow the change in ambient air, um, how, how slow
slow the, the temperature change equilibrates with the ambient air. Any questions? Yeah, Jeff. Here's the data I just collected. If there's any questions, <coughs> check my work, I guess. Here's the standard. 